Hello, everyone. Good uh, morning or afternoon or evening, whenever you watch uh, this interview. Uh, Matt Levy, our brother, is joining us, uh, joining me. Uh, and uh, Matt and I will be talking about the caregiving pathway. As many, many of you know, Matt, he is, uh, to me, he's like uh, this amazing, uh, cutting edge, uh, radical person when it comes to caregiving. He's shaking his head right now, but uh, uh, it's because he doesn't feel that way because uh, it, it is coupled with some humility and, and that's inspiring. But uh, for most of us, what Matt, what you do is is really radical. It's like, uh, you know, engaging with homeless people, uh, with addicts and, and feeling comfortable in their midst and, and really uh, meeting their needs. Uh, so I just wanted to, wanted to ask, uh, how, you know, did, did you were you always this way? Did you start out? Uh, how did how did this develop? This uh, this this confidence and this ministry of, of the heart of caregiving. Um, I wasn't always this way. I mean, my my my, my dad um, modeled good stuff for me. He took a a homeless woman in um, in our home in Jamaica and made a little room for her, and and she was she was dying. Um, you know, he just he just made room for her. And uh, he did that lots of times. He did things like that. So we would we would go to the countryside and people would be, you know, oh, Mas Paul, you know, this is a guy that helped me. He built my house or he did this, he did that. So I, I kind of had a good a role model, but I was pretty self-centered actor before I became a Christian. I, I was much more interested in fame and fortune and mm. trying to be somebody. Um so you know it's 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 come around later in life that I've been more interested in um, meeting other people's needs and stuff. But um, you know it's it's really comes down to what you taught us, Petty, about Jesus' substitutionary sacrifice. He's the Savior who switched his places. So he wasn't just you know looking from a distance at the at the uh, refugee children. You know he mm -hmm. became one in in Egypt. Um, and he, he switched places with the leper, you know, he, he went out there, he could have been comfortable, you know, running his carpentry business and taking care of his family. And, you know, he had eight brothers and sisters, at least, as far as I can tell from the Bible, you know, he had four brothers and many sisters. So like, he could have yeah. just stayed doing that, but he, he said, let's, let's go give up my business and, and hang out with the homeless and, and go be a preacher. Um, and that, that's, that's switching places. You know, yeah. he, he identified with lepers and orphans and widows and Gentiles and prostitutes and all the people that were disgraced and, you know, um, put out of society. Mm. And <clears throat> so there's a great passage where he tells the leper, you know, after he heals him, don't, don't, don't speak too much about this. Just go show yourself to the priest. And instead the guy goes out and blabs and tells everybody and he's excited. I can understand that. Um, but because of that, Jesus had to switch places. Jesus couldn't go into the town. He had to hang out in the lonely places where the leper used to be. Right. Yeah. And I think that's really a great picture of Jesus ministry. You know, he, he was naked on the cross. He was pierced. He was, he was shamed. Mm -hmm. It was disgraceful. You know, he hung out with people that people that weren't, were on the margins, you know, the Gentiles yeah. and the Samaritans and the prostitutes and the tax collectors were, were, were the, the modern drug addicts and the, you know, the, the, the prisoners, you know, yeah. the people that, people that we don't want to hang out with today but jesus hung out with them you know he was there they were their his friends you know? so matt can i ask you uh, a question so i know you earlier uh, as we talked uh you shared with me uh about uh, just this recent friendship that you developed with a person uh maybe you know some of the things that you're sharing are pretty you know pretty like uh, how do i do this kind of thing but Maybe share that story uh, with everybody. And, yeah, really uh, simple because stuff. It's, yeah, it, it's, you know, help us with some of the simple stuff. Where do we begin? Yeah, okay. So, like, like for example, um, a little while ago, I started making up little meals and just putting them in Ziploc bags and leaving them in my van. And so that way, if somebody, I came across a homeless person and they're just standing there, instead of giving them five bucks, right, I, I can give them a meal. And 
you know, I, I wrote on the, on the bag, you know, courtesy of Hope Worldwide, and I put my phone number there, right? And then it's a little bit, it's a little bit uh, out there, but, you know, it, it's been a great way to make friends. And so I was, I was walking into this mall after golfing, and here was this, here was this nice Aboriginal guy sitting on the ground with his hat out. And so I just went back to the car and I got one of the meals. It's got a toothbrush in it. I mean, just dollar store stuff. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like I need to spend a bunch of money, you know, to put a little Ziploc bag together with a meal in it. Um, you know, some granola bars, you know, some um, dollar store soup. I mean, it, was, it wasn't much, right? But then I, I, I stopped and I, and, I, and I said, hey, you know, would you like a meal? My name is Matt, you know, and he, we started talking. He just turned out to be the most interesting guy. You know, he was an Aboriginal fisherman. He had some difficult times and we had a really great talk. He had a great sense of humor. You know, <laughs> he gave me his phone number. He had a cell phone right there. You know, he had a cracked screen cell phone, but you know, the guy has dignity and we've become friends and he turns out to live not far from me. Oh, that's so, awesome. You know, there are a lot of people, if you just give to those who ask you, um, and if you prepare your mindset to, okay, I'm, I'm not on this earth just to serve myself, right? Yeah. Um, there's lots of opportunities. And um, yeah, you know, I, you. Uh, I think it's totally possible to make a lot of friends that way. And we should have friends who are of every social strata. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you, Matt. Uh, I, I, you know, this was, uh, I think, you know, this is something that I can take personally as a, as a good next step is just to prepare a couple of these Ziploc kits uh, to have it in my car. Uh, so when I see somebody uh, put my, put a phone number, my phone number on it, uh, just uh, connect and, and make those yeah. connections and, and take the time. Uh, no, thank you so much. Uh, and we, you know, you, you are, what you do is a little bit out there for most of us, but it inspires me, Matt. And, yeah, uh, it's a and, little bit. It's a little bit um, risky, but yes. I mean, I think about it's not for everyone, for sure. But it is something that we can all take a step towards uh, as we engage more in uh, in this uh, in the caregiving pathway of loving right. people as God would love them. And thanks for sharing Absolutely. that uh, the idea of what if I traded places with this person? There's even that that thought in, in my mind. Uh, just just puts puts a whole different spin on helping people. Uh, so thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, our interview, and uh, have a great day, Matt. Thanks, Petty.